Hi everybody, Christina Stewart here with Christina Stewart Photography. Welcome to another edition of Photo Tips Tuesday. This is my friend and former co-worker Josh Conti. We used to work together at Southern Photo Southern for all Food. of you. Oh, yeah. That's no longer with us. <laughs> for those Bavardians who know about Southern Photo. And what is your business name now, Josh? Um, I'm with Justin Torpy Photography for real estate and then it's Joshua Conti for other pictures outside of that. So awesome. So tonight we were judging the Camera Club of Brevard's annual print contest and there go all of our lights. <laughs> and we, I wanted to just stress the importance of looking at other people's images. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is you wanna educate yourself. You wanna see what other people are doing, especially as a newbie, yeah. right? If they're young and if you're just getting started, you want to emulate other people's work as a way, it is kind of flattering, but also as a way of trying to figure out how they did it. And so tonight was really fun because I am photojournalism, photojournalist is my background, and the camera club draws a lot of landscape art photographers, fine art photographers, bird photographers, as, as my fabulous student Becky knows. <laughs> <laughs> Lots don't, of birds. Don't bring me any boring <laughs> bird pictures. So it's, it kind of gets me out of my comfort zone and really looking at the technical side of photography right. as well as the pretty picture. It's not just about the pretty picture. So what are some of the things that we talked about that you noticed or uh, the importance of I, looking I, at other people's work? I think the, the, biggest, the biggest things, you know, seeing the stuff tonight and having judged other art contests and things like that, um, the one thing I can tell people before you enter a contest, always look at the people that you're aspiring to be and don't try to be them, but see where they've taken their art and then try to go somewhere with that. So if you see somebody doing something with birds and you know they're winning with birds, don't shoot something else. Shoot kind of that direction they're shooting. You can do your own thing, but pay attention to what people are doing that is getting them places. You know, so always, if, if you're looking at what people are doing, and then don't always apply the same thing that you're used to, to your work. So okay. I do real estate photography, and the stuff I do in real estate photography breaks all the rules of every other kind of photography. <laughs> I would never do it anywhere else. There's stuff I have to fake, vibrance is up, and all this stuff that I would never do with a bird picture. Uh -huh. So As far I, as your post-production, you mean? Post-production, okay. even shooting. And so manu mentally and manually, I'm adjusting things in my head for every situation. So you have to be ready to adapt your head to those situations. So when you're out shooting and you, you're out somewhere where you're like, hey, I think I could get a picture for a contest or I think I could enter this, you know, make sure your head's in the right place too. You know, make sure that you're thinking the right way and you're not thinking in a completely different way that ends up just kind of, you know, not being the picture you really want, if that makes any so sense. So planning out your image. Planning, planning out, even if it's instantaneous, planning out can just be like, oh wow, somebody's in the background, I'm gonna take this picture again. That can, okay. be, that can be simple little things. Being conscious just, of your right. shooting as you're shooting. Right, it. you know, okay. being yeah. conscious of, hey, if I move to the right two feet, I could change this whole thing. Yeah. And being and then doing it, because, you know, as a professional, I have to make professional mistakes. Sometimes I'll shoot a room three different ways, and I may never use it, it may burn up more time, but then if somebody comes back and says, hey, I didn't see that mirror in there, and I didn't see the mirror, I've done it right, and I don't have to go back and do it again. So there's a lot of things like that where, you know, you want to go and just, if you see something, see it again. Really, that's really it. I love you know, that. Absolutely. Look for something else, you know. And one of the tips that I usually very often give is see your subject matter and then look everywhere else. Exactly. Look all around your whole picture to see if that person is walking into your image. If that pole, like neither one of us is standing with the tree behind us to <laughs> right. grow out of our heads. Kind of. This, I know. We're like, <laughs> why don't we get closer? There's a tree there. So always looking around your whole picture the background who you know i shoot with both eyes open yes ex i do too i do the exact people we get weirded out by it but i say if i'm at a wedding i'm running down an aisle i can see if i run into a chair <laughs> right. but then it's also i'm paying attention if somebody moves in the corner i'm catching things that you want to catch if you're squinting or if you're so focused in that picture that you're you've internalized everything and you're missing the moment somewhere else 
Yeah. You know, yeah, you always want to know. Thing. Well, and I shot. Be aware, being self aware of everything around you. And you're listening. Yes. You can yes. use your ears. When you're shooting with your eyes, use your ears and listen for stuff moving around you. If you hear a grandparent talking in the background, you might get a better picture of them talking mm -hmm. than what you're looking at there. You'll hear things and, you'll, and then you'll be Perfect. able to see them. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and that, that goes with being aware absolutely so being aware of what's happening in your picture and yes what's happening behind you right right what's happening next to you and for me it was safety reasons i shoot a lot of <laughs> yeah. i would shoot a lot of sports well photojournalism too yes you know? when i <laughs> photojournalism but and all yeah i'd be in the middle of the road <laughs> yeah and i've actually had cops called on me because i was shooting photographing not shooting <laughs> i'll clarify with that one we could get in trouble <laughs> I was photographing an, an, an overpass of a highway getting speeders and um, somebody on 95, I-95, called the cops and said that, you know, me and the reporter who was who was clocking, we had a speed gun, whatever that's called. Yeah, radar gun. Or radar something. gun. Yeah, yeah. Um, they called the police on us and said the people are at the overpass. And like within like five minutes of us being there, the police were there. So I'm, I've been on middle of the roads. I I've, I've had um, I've had schools come out at me because they saw the you know a drone in the air and stuff too. So you know, oh, drones. you know, so being aware and being able to handle yourself and stuff like that's important. But and not know, getting tackled on the side. Exactly, lines. not getting tackled. Yeah. <laughs> that's happened. I've seen but, but, many photographers get but, tackled on the sidelines. But awareness is key, and I, I think some of the stuff I noticed in certain pictures were people were trying to get the moment and they were trying to get something but they weren't paying attention to the little things that actually changed the whole picture. I saw this great picture of a door, but there was a trash can, you know? Mm. And, you know, what if another door didn't have a trash can? You know, what if you kept walking and ran into something else? What if you approach it from another way? I've got to shoot houses all the time where I've got trash cans over here. If I move to the right You're or left a little angle, bit, yeah. I can change my angle, I can zoom a little bit. Yeah. changes everything. I, I literally use my awareness to hide things so it makes it easier for me to edit and makes everything look better. Yeah. Yeah, you it's know. better to edit in camera yes. than to it's rely so, on it later and so try important. and do it in post-production. And post-production means for my newbies right. or people just getting started, post-production is the Photoshopping that you do after you take the picture. Right, Lightroom or whatever you're using, or Photoshop, whatever, you know, if you're using editing for program. anything like that. Anything you're editing, that's post-production. Yeah, yeah, so it's you always want to shoot it right to start with because your job will be much easier <laughs> later on when you get home. And you're not gonna, you're gonna get home and you're gonna go, man, that garbage can was right in my picture. I wish I would have noticed to, that. To your point, there's so much danger in feeling like you can fix it later. Yes. So I'm gonna post this in two parts because we went a little bit long and I really would love to talk to you more, Josh, because we worked be really well and played played well together and have some fun. And he's got, he's much more technical than I am. this is proof that Canon and Nikon can coexist. <laughs> we can work together. <laughs> Canon rules. So, <laughs> so I'm going to post this in two parts. So stay tuned. Thank you guys. Thank you, Josh. I love you. Thank you so much. You're the best. <laughs> Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Now go see the lights. <laughs> Bye.